Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hammer Podcast. Today is March 30th, 2022, and I am talking with Anna. Anna went to the Diamond Ranch Academy in Hurricane, Utah from, I can't remember the, the uh, years. 2017 to 2020. 2020. So right before the pandemic hit. Uh, fairly recently. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, hand it over to Anna. She's going to talk to us about the things that happened there and uh go ahead anna it's all yours well my name is anna i first went to diamond ranch around i believe october 2018 2017 i don't remember the exact year right now um i was there for about 20 months which is double the amount of time where you know people are normally there for about 10 months Okay. I went there because I went to Wilderness first in a nearby town, Wingate Wilderness. Then I went to Discovery Ranch for girls, and that didn't work out well. I got pulled from the program uh, because of staff's behavior, not mine, to be fair. Okay. Um, and then my mom was recommended that one, so I was taken there. I was actually gooned, so if you're familiar with the term, if you're not... Um, it's essentially when they hire transporters to wake you up in the middle of the night and just take you away. And so I was woken up at 2 a.m. by two looming men going like, you're coming with us, whether you like it or not. And I was like, okay, great. Like, I know what's going on here. I'm fine to go. You don't need to, like, handcuff me. Right. The, goons, um, the goon squad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, to this day, I have, like, people cannot wake me up. I have punched my partner in the face. Ooh. And I felt so bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> to this day, she's like, oh, remember when you hit me? And I was like, don't remind me. Like, please. <laughs> I, it was an accident, you know. Right. And a lot of my friends I'm still in contact with have had, like, similar experiences with not being able to really sleep. I have to check all the doors, all the windows. Everything has to be locked or else I cannot sleep. Um, P- it's PTSD is basically what it is. Oh, I've, I've been uh, diagnosed with PTSD since then. I've got this nifty little bracelet that says post-traumatic stress disorder. So if I have, like, panic attacks in public, they're not like, oh, she's having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it's useful. It's happened once or twice. So there I got go. this. Um, so my first few weeks there were quite difficult because I grew up in Austria and England. So culturally very different. I'd only been in America not even a year at the time, so it was still very different to me. Um, I was often made fun of for my accent to the extent where I just wouldn't talk much. But the good thing comparative to the one before, the place I was at before is you could just talk to people freely. Um, dis, uh, Dime, sorry, Discovery Ranch, you had to ask to talk to someone and the staff had to listen, which was difficult. For the most part, no. uh, oh, for, for, yeah, it was intense. For the most part, the staff were very nice. There were a few staff I didn't get along with very well due to personal differences in ethics, views, uh, a lot of homophobia and transphobia to the umpteenth degree, degree, and also a lot of racism. Um, A fun fact I like to say, and you know, some things I like to say about it, is words that weren't allowed were hell, damn, most conventional cuss words, you know, like the F word, the C word, but right. a staff screamed the N word at a student and wasn't recommended. Um, the T slur and the F slur were used a lot on participants in the program, and it was whatever, but not hell, not Jesus. It was very Mormon. Um, on weekends, we also had higher power hour, which we were forced to attend. Um, and if we, it was on Sundays and it was just very difficult for me from coming from a mostly atheist background. I grew up with a Jewish mother. So of course I had that part, but I don't necessarily believe in a higher power, um, which was difficult. Cause I was like, I'm a Jew. And they'd be like, <laughs> well, so you still need to read the Bible, man. And I'd be like, <laughs> okay, I guess so. So I, I used to spend my free time finding the most like controversial things in the Bible um, and writing them down. And whenever they like quoted Bible quotes at me, I'd be like, oh, well, at one point, 
the Bible says so and so. And you took it out of but context. The, you oh, took completely. It out of context. Yes, completely out of yes, context. Yes, <laughs> completely out of context. Oh, yes. That's what they you know, always the whole, say. But yeah, yeah, and when they're when Jesus was talking about, or when they were talking about selling slaves, it was about the slaves in your heart. And then they go on to list the ethics and the ways to uh, to sell trade right. or uh, slaves. Right. <laughs> I was, I was a, like, oh, that's just a big typo, man. And indentured servitude is what they would say, not, yes, not the slaves yes, that were back, you know, in the in the. Oh yeah, not yeah, not slaves. You know what? No, not of course not. Um, yeah. So they have a level system, which every two months you get leveled up, and every week you have to do like homework. I guess is what you could call it, but you have to like write a paper, read a book, and then you got to go to the next week of work, and then at the end you'd get quizzed on everything you learned in that. Um, so the first one it was just basic and then the last one was postgraduate and then you left i was a postgraduate for 10 months um and i just didn't leave i was just stuck i was like oh great but if you're a post uh graduate you got to go on the birthday benefit so once a month they take everyone whose birthday was in that month and take them to the cinema so at least i got to do that a few times you know but right. it was just difficult because my mother and i didn't have a good relationship um, and I would not have been able to go home. And my dad, don't, I don't think he wanted me home, frankly. I mean, I visited him a few months ago, and it was clear he didn't want me when I'm older either. So, you know. So what exactly, uh, when you went to the cinema, what were you watching? G-rated movies? Yes. Um, I think the most, like, controversial movie we watched was Avengers Endgame. Uh and that was not very controversial. It was just like, oh, they said cuss words. We should probably leave. And I was like, no, I've been waiting for this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All it takes is one cuss word and they'll, they'll grab oh, yeah. and leave. I know. They'll be like, oof, sorry, guys. We're uh, heading out. Um, there's a lot of times where we watch movies that were just very odd. My favorite story to tell to this day is, so I was part of the student council, which was essentially a group of snitches, give or take, you know, a few words, but that's what we were. Except for me, who just was a little advocate who went, don't you talk to her like that. Um, and I got, I got put on the student council because I was, an, I was advocating for um, reforms in the dress code stuff like that and we went for to watch scary stories to tell in the dark in the cinema and that morning i had an earwig crawl in my ear and the entire time i was like i have a bug in my ear and they're like no you don't you're just making it up blah 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 and they refused to give me medical attention uh until like quite a bit later in the day and when they looked in my ear they were like oh my god there's a bug in your ear and i was like <laughs> oh, wow really i couldn't tell <laughs> they're like why didn't you come sooner i was like no one let me like and i i kept the little bug to show it off and be like you guys were saying i was lying and his name was antonio but they made me get rid of him at the end of the day so what was what was the dress code was it um very strict no tank tops even if it's four fingers um, I got it reformed to four fingers because I was like, no tank tops is ridiculous. Um, shoulders aren't inherently sexual, anything like that. We had to wear a bra. And I was like, okay, if we have to wear a bra, then why are we not allowed to show bra straps in any sort of form? Like, even if your bra, bra strap was poking out a little bit, you got detention for it. So I managed to make it so that the bra strap was no longer something detention worthy um those were the main two that i worked on getting you... changed and changing the sexist rules essentially um so when by the time i left we had nearly gotten rid of the you have to wear a bra rule because the men don't have to wear a bra and if they don't and i can see all of their nipples you know it's distracting for us, you know. Us girls, shirtless boys, mm, so distracting from our studies. 
Well, when you think about it, you know, if you weren't wearing a bra, then the guys would see your nipples too, and that would be very distracting for them. Exactly, exactly. It was just very odd, and they were strict about it in odd ways. Like, one day, it's fine to wear leggings, and the next day, your shirt has to go, like, to your, like, under the butt, essentially. Because you're, like, sh you're showing off your butt, stuff like that. And it was just right. very difficult to stick to the dress code, because they'd constantly be switching it up. And the staff's favorite thing to say was... Just because we haven't enforced it before doesn't mean it's not a rule. And a lot of the times they were just making shit up. So right. it was like... And I read the entire dress code pamphlet um, helped people get out of detention once or twice, which was pretty funny. Um, and it was just a lot of weird rules to adhere by. Now, as far as the dress code, I want to go a little bit farther into that real quick. Yeah. Um was it strictly dresses for the girls or could they wear pants or oh, shorts? They they were fine with pants, shorts, not so much. The shorts had to be below the knee. Okay. Pants were fine though. T-shirts were fine. For the most part, you're allowed to have patterns on your shirt or like appro appropriate pictures on your shirt. Right. Like, uh, Although a girl did manage to get rip and dip shirts in with the cat with the little middle finger and she just put her pocket down and go whoop whoop <laughs> and we'd all be like yeah you get that <laughs> um we weren't allowed anything with rainbows on it for some reason I can only never imagine. guess it I can only yeah imagine. oh no <laughs> the gays are taking over oh no sorry another instance of that is we weren't allowed to talk about previous girlfriends at all. Like, I was talking about my ex-girlfriend, and they were like, no, you're not allowed to talk about it, and even gave me detention. But, like, children were allowed to go into graphic detail about being with boyfriends, and I was like, okay. Did you tell them that you were gay? Um, not necessarily, but it was pretty, like, obvious obvious uh, right. yeah no because they'd be like oh like talk about your ex-boyfriend and i'd be like i've only got ex-girlfriends <laughs> well that's pretty obvious but, yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i mean that's a pointer towards yeah. you know uh it was just odd because a lot of the time the staff would talk about how being gay and transgender was a mental illness and i'd kind of just be like not sure about that but Thumb, that's, double thumbs up. That's that's every Christian yeah. sect, whether it's Mormon or Baptist or it doesn't matter. It's Homosexuality important. is is a big no no, but they say it's 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 a mental disorder and all this other stuff. But yet they're doing it themselves. They'll do it. I've known many people that have known other people that have been molesting boys, men molesting oh, yeah. boys. You know, so it's. Just because they say it doesn't mean they're not doing it. And they do it. They're secretive oh, about it. Very yeah, they're secretive. like, oh, it's only gay if you act on it. And it's like, oh, <laughs> honey, I hate to tell you this, but you're gay. <laughs> did, now, being that it was a Mormon place, uh, did you have to go out and witness to people go out door to door? Like, you know, normal uh, Mormons do? No, okay. not at all. Uh, we wouldn't even really leave the campus at all. I think in my first three or four months, maybe even five months, I only left campus once, which is a bit, you know, sucky, but it makes sense because a lot of people are run risks. Now, you had um, all, you also had phone calls to your parents or mom? Or kind of. We had family therapy, which was incredibly closely monitored. All letters out were incredibly closely monitored. Um, I sent letters to my mom being like, you've got to get me out of here. Like, they hate the gays. Like, please help. And my mom just never received them. No. And when I talked to her in family therapy a few months back, because I'm, you know, still in therapy, you can be in therapy for forever and still not be your best self. Although I do right. feel a lot better than I did when I was in there, which is nice. And she was shocked to hear all of the things that happened there that I had sent letters about but they simply didn't send. 
um, and refused to send them to my mom and would just shred them, apparently. Okay, they... Which is... I, uh, usually when, uh, this kind of reminds me of agape. What they would do is they would mark it out and they would give it back to that person and say, you need to rewrite it. But they oh, just, they, they would just, sometimes do that. They would sometimes do that, okay. Only if it had cuss words. Then you had to get rid of the cuss words. Because you're a girl and darling. Yeah. You know, what not. And I, like, sent letters. I tried to code things. And it just never got through to her. And when I told her that they were, like, calling me slurs, she was like, what? What? The whole reason I got pulled from the program is because I told my mom that. And she flipped out on me and started hitting me. And then sent me to the mental hospital because I was delusional. And I was like, oh, yeah, so delusional. But the good thing that came out of that is I went to the UniCat program. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's essentially a specialized uh, mental hospital sort of thing in the U uh, University of Utah medicine area where you get uh, specially diagnosed. And that's how I got diagnosed with PTSD. They got rid of the misdiagnosis of borderline personality disorder, which is what the school gave me, which was wrong for many reasons. Um, and we're like, what? What? They, they were like, these people shouldn't have diagnosed you, shouldn't be able to diagnose you. Also, you're a child. They can't right. diagnose you with a personality disorder. Um, and also, you know, being gay is a mental illness to them. They oh yeah. They, did, they didn't check you for that. They didn't say that you had a mental illness there. They 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 showed <laughs> me some women's magazines and I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, how that worked. Yeah. Um. Didn't work out too well like, for them. <laughs> oh no, it didn't. Oh, trust me, it didn't. <laughs> um. There was also a person there who I haven't really talked to in maybe half a year. Um, who has since come out to me as non-binary, so under the trans umbrella, and was like, yeah, I was too scared to say anything then since they were so, like, ragingly transphobic. And I was like, oh, oh, God, I'm sorry. Right. Well, a lot of people that are either homosex come out as homosexual or not, that, that think they are or whatever... Um, they they don't want especially in a in a Christian environment. Yeah. They don't want to, any of that. Get oh no! Because I was... well, because it it they, they isolate them. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know about this place, but it, I, they isolate them. They 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 treat them harsher, basically, because oh, yeah. So a lot of people don't come out until they leave the place, and then they come out. So. Um, but you were a lot stronger than them because you you told them I, I'm gay. I grew up, oh yeah, I was like, I'm gay. Woo! It's no, June Pride Month. You need to be nice to me. <laughs> Stuff like that. But I also grew up in a very supportive environment. Um, and my sister, who is also very gay, who's five years older than me, has always told me that it's okay, you know, and be sure. loud, be proud, all of that sort of stuff. Of all of the gay people there, because you know, I've got I've got the second senses. Also, because they came out to me because I was the safe gay one. <laughs> <laughs> um, of all of the gay people there, only two of us were openly out, and the rest of the twelve of us were so in the closet. You like, oh my god, in the closet. Um, which, which I is guess. It's fine. It's difficult for them, I think. It's, oh, for safety? I completely am fine with people being in the closet for safety. Yes. I should have been in the closet there because I would have gotten a lot less harsh, tre harsh treatment. But at the time, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm gay. I, I actually got my some of my privileges revoked because they've got an animal area. And I helped clean the area, work with the animals, do some of the garden and one of the staff called me the F slur, and I went, you want to fucking say that again? You, you want to go? <laughs> you you want to take this outside? We can take this outside. Yeah. And uh, I got in trouble because I was being argumentative, and I was like, I mean, yeah. 
I was being argumentative, but also sometimes you got to be a bit piss you off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But what what kind of uh, discipline did they have besides you know, taking away your privileges? They didn't. Did they beat oh, you? Did they put you in these small not, closets? Starve not you? Not beat. Starve on the down low. Because um, I was seen as overweight, so they put me on the diet, which was nothing. And also food that it turns out I'm allergic to. I'm allergic mm. to turkey, which it, they just always serve us turkey patties with a bit of arugula. I'm also allergic to arugula. <laughs> And that was every other meal was a turkey patty with arugula. And I was like, I'm dying. And I wasn't overweight. I'm five foot eight and I've been five foot eight for a few years and 180 pounds. And I was like, I'm fat. Okay. Uh... And so it was like a way to punish and control certain people. Right. Um, they essentially got put on a diet, even if, like one of the skinny girls got put on the diet because she was misbehaving for a while, and it was like, okay. Now what? Now what about the staff? Were any of the staff overweight? Yes. Oh yes. Do as I say, no offense, not as I but, do. Oh yes. <laughs> if if you know of the term Disney adult, imagine a Disney adult. A lot of them were Disney adults, like a little bit overweight, a Karen haircut. And obsessed with Disney for some reason. Um, didn't know why. They just very much like Disney. So the the main punishment would be Po, which is spelled P O H, which is privileges on hold. You would be stuck in a room. You weren't allowed to talk to anyone. You'd have to complete an assignment, and then you have to do an hour of exercise. And when you think like an hour of exercise, it's like oh maybe some light jogging. We did so like such extreme exercises that even I, someone who was pretty physically fit, was sick more than once. Um, like I did karate for three, four years, and I that was still too much for me. And other people just couldn't do it and would get failed and had to repeat that day. Um, you'd get po for the stupidest shit. Um, your room isn't clean enough. You didn't take a shower that night. Um, your homework wasn't done as well as it could have been. Um, hmm. For suicide watch, you got put on Poe, which I think is despicable, frankly, because they would essentially punish a child that needs help. Like, you admit you feel, like, suicidal or you feel, like, self-harming. They will put you in a punishment, which I think is gross, because if, because when I was like, at, when I was first getting there, only a few months in, I was like, yeah, I'm really not feeling great. And they put me in a bright yellow shirt, black pants, and flip flops. And that was all they allowed me to wear. They took all of my belongings, including all of my ba bath supplies, everything, and put me on suicide watch. And I was like, bro, I just told you I was depressed. I didn't say I was going to go off myself. <laughs> so. When people say that they're suicidal, and I, I, I'm not siding with them, but what, but me, for instance, if someone said they were suicidal, you really have to kind of assess the situation. Okay, are they just saying that to get out of this place? You know, do I take them to the hosp mental hospital to make sure maybe they, they are serious? They allowed to not? take us to the mental hospital. Uh, they didn't allow us to the mental hospital or really any medical care. So it was basically just a strict basically mm -hmm. exactly okay. only, and i didn't only, even s only yeah. one action yeah okay um i didn't even say i was suicidal i said i was having a really rough day and would like some extra support because it was a rough day i was like no. oh, sobbing my eyes out i was like i need some extra support i'm really feeling not great and they were like bonk well of course you're in a place you've never been in you're by yourself yeah. you know in, a, kid, in another you're... country yeah. Welcome to America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great welcome. Right? Wonderful welcome. <laughs> mm. Welcome to the world of religion. So, yeah. yeah. But um, another thing I wanted to ask you about the food. How was the, besides the turkey patties and the, and the whatever that stuff was, uh, what was okay. it called? 
arugula. Arugula, um, yes. I don't know. In England, it's called rocket. So rocket or arugula, same thing. Um, absolutely despicable. There was Sla- a few meals. Yeah, uh-huh. essentially. There's a few meals that were good. Um, I worked in the kitchen the entire time I was there, pretty much. From when I could to when I left, I was working in the kitchen, which essentially meant washing dishes and doing some meal prep and helping cook the meals. I, I'm i a machine at washing dishes now. I go, bah, 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 bah. like, I do all of the dishwashing whilst the rest of the girls were just sitting down drinking lemonade that they made with, like, some extra lemons, and I'd be like, I've got this! I've got the dishes, guys! <laughs> um, and they had Philly cheesesteak. Um, and thinking about making that makes me feel a bit sick. Um, it was just like, you had to use like these giant spatula things and cut it up and stir it around. And it was just like really gross, came in frozen. And like, after I made it, I could not eat it. There's a few meals that after I made them, I could not eat it. They made roast chicken. And after the roast chicken, we'd wash the trays and we they had what we called chicken jelly um it was essentially bits that boiled out of the chicken and turned into gelatin essentially uh, very gross to clean oh. um the best meals okay oh broccoli cheddar soup they made the best broccoli cheddar soup frozen yes delicious certainly the breakfasts the breakfasts were nearly always good There was only one or two I didn't really like, but that's just because I personally don't like, you know, I don't like uh, banana pudding, and it was banana pudding with granola, and I was like, not the banana pudding! Well, Um, they they didn't have any custard tarts, dear. (sighs) Sadly. (laughs) Right? (laughs) You know. I have Um, a couple couple of buddies from England, so... (laughs) Some shepherd's pie. Oh, oh can die happy oh. with that. <laughs> no, no. Um, I can't even remember their name anymore. Shepherd's pudding, whatever it's called, like the fluffy bread things that I like a lot. Oh, like a bread pudding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, love them. They. Mm. It was strange because a lot of their foods were like, you know, it's good for you, and then it was just so gross I couldn't really eat it. I had stomach issues. Uh, I still do, but when I first got there, they were incredibly bad because I was not used to eating that kind of stuff. Like, even my school meals back home were, like, okay on my stomach, and they weren't, like, particularly healthy. But when I got there, it was just so heavy in my stomach, I would just, you know, I'll get the runs, I'd puke, and they'd be like, you're just making it up for attention, and I'd be like, take me to hospital, please. (laughs) Now, did you ever meet uh, the founder, Rob Dias? Yes. Dias or Dias? I don't know how to say his last name. Um, Once. But right now, I believe it's run by the Gallaghers. The Gallaghers? Yes. Okay. Um, Shane and Diana, maybe. Um, so there's a few people that worked there when I was there that still work there, like... Um, the person who's in charge of staff, the person who's in charge of um, enrollment, they're still the same people. Um, the reason I know that is because I was informed by the other Anna, Anna C. Um, there was a lot of Annas. <laughs> Anna C. <laughs> that they had accidentally sent her all of my medical information. Oh. Um my psych reports, my medical uh, evaluations, um, school stuff, all of that. Like, my FERPA, my HIPAA, like, they went ham when they sent it to her. Oh, man. And so they didn't know that it was, like, sent out. I had to tell them, like, you sent my HIPAA violation stuff out. What the fuck? Um, Right. And at first they denied it. Then they were like, yeah, we did. And then the lawyer, Bill, who's lovely. I love Bill. I can't really distalk him. He sent me, like, a package with every single piece of paper that was in it and went, sorry. And they self-reported and got fined, I think, $2,500. Um, Bill is actually also my mother's lawyer. Um, somehow that happened. 
but he's he is genuinely lovely and he can't really choose who he works for he just kind of has to um he's so lovely i still text him from time to time you know yeah okay did, um, did so the, they did, did the staff live on on site or did they have their homes up they had three shifts they had morning afternoon and night shift and essentially once your shift was done you're out you're gone you can go home you can do whatever okay go out to the bar have a couple drinks a couple Honestly. cocktails <laughs> god if i worked there i i'd be drunk yeah yeah every sounds, night sounds like a place that might drive you to drink yeah <laughs> yeah now this was a co-ed place there were boys there as well yes and no it was co-ed is in the, so the girls had one building the boys had one building and we never interacted okay. we just simply coexisted in the same sort of area and every week was a different set of staff um so it was one week on one week off and some staff like would take shifts for others some you know so it would be like a big whole mix up but they had a very high turnover rate quite easily just like a lot of other places yeah a lot of a lot of turnover yes uh there's been times where a staff has come to try out and they just didn't come back the next day they just went Whoop, bye because they just couldn't handle it at all um yeah. now reading about reading about uh this place i read about uh two deaths there two confirmed deaths um i believe one of them is unknown probably a suicide and the other one was because of medical neglect i call me a conspiracy theorist i think there have definitely been more caused by it at least but just not happened on the property so they got away with it right um one time so a girl was skateboarding broke her foot incredibly badly like across the entire top of her foot and her ankle was broken Ooh. and she swore they gave her detention didn't take her to hospital she got to hospital a few weeks after and they were like oh my god we need to call cps like what is this and there's been like many incidents like that where they've just medically neglected people where i really do think there have been more but they haven't happened on the campus so they can't right. You know they can't go boop, 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 like a suicide whilst they were on a home visit or something like that um now, i also uh, read that there was incidents of sexual assault as well oh oh god yes a lot happened to me more than once um when we got in we were given breast exams um which aren't on any file right. and not only did we get given breast exams he was so bad at doing breast exams that I have I have a tumor in my boob that he didn't even he didn't even find I was like there's a lump there and he was like I didn't feel anything and I was like oh, okay um and then the second time it happened I was on a medication called respiridol which is known for making people lactate and they I was like can you do like blood tests and they were like oh yeah well first we'll do this and they just went kind of went and they were like okay you're lactating and I was like oh god it was a bit much. Were these males doing this? Yes. So they should um, have a, the main... a they should have a female doing that just in case. That way, there's no incident of that. You know what I mean? And even well, then, yes. I mean... Let me see. Um, because it's happened to a lot of people that I know where they have like a similar thing, and it's it's not necessarily the fact of getting a breast exam because I'm fine. I've gotten ex I got exams got a biopsy like last year to get the lump checked out that didn't bother me at all and that was a male doctor it was that it was obviously not a breast exam it was a wink wink nudge nudge breast exam well this this was done by somebody who's in a religious organization yes <laughs> sexually yeah. sexually deprived ingrates who only procreate <laughs> to have kids so oh god that's the, so weird to me the, they like the, they were like we don't use condoms and i was like what the, the first sign the first sight of a pair of young boobs 
oh goes yeah right off the rail immediately yeah, stuff starts going in their mind oh yeah yeah exactly and that's when the problems start oh, so so, so they yeah and they kind of just pushed it under the rug and said that we were lying even though it was a lot of girls who came out with similar stories at different times and didn't really talk to each other um because i was friends with maybe four or five people like close friends and we knew everyone everyone knew everyone i didn't have drama with anyone so it was fine yeah um but like people i didn't really talk to came out with the exact same story i had and i was like oh it's not just me um yeah. also when i first got there I had the TB test done on me very incorrectly. Um, they did. It wasn't even a nurse or anyone medically trained who did it or had a license. It was just one of the staff who did it. They were like, hmm. oh, I'd like to try it. And I went, pardon? <laughs> what? <laughs> you want to try it? Uh, <laughs> it's enough for me. And then they like were like, well, you've got to. And I was like, okay, fine. And she did it too deep. And I just like was bleeding into a little bubble on my arm and I was like thumbs wow. up great you were the you were the uh, guinea pig probably oh yeah little porcupine <laughs> <Got a bubble. laughs> were there any fights there any anybody fighting my favorite story of a fight probably oh. shouldn't have a favorite was we <laughs> had person A and person B person A is I love her. I still talk to her. One of my best friends there. And person B was talking shit about me. And so person A was like, why are you talking about her like that? She's like, never done anything. And they're like, well, she's foreign. She should go back to where she came from. Was essentially how it went. She was. She did not like foreigners. And I was like, oh, fair enough. I don't like me. Um, so person A like was like, no. And so they got into fisty cuffs and uh person a ended up with like a scratch across her face like claw marks Ooh. and person b ended up with like a punch in the face and i was like oh, what did i just witness <laughs> um the other time i can really remember is to best describe it if you've seen the will smith thing exactly yes. like that just the un like you don't know what's about to happen and then smack and we were all just sitting in the the dining room and then smack and all of us just go what <laughs> also plenty of cups of water dumped on people's heads you know yeah well kids will be kids i guess you know that's how it is that was it was 12 year olds to 17 year olds like yes, the that? youngest person when I was there was about, I think she might have been 11, actually. She was incredibly young, like so young. I was like, why are you here? And, you know, I never got a clear answer for why she was here. But I was like, you are so young. Um, I at the end of my time there, I was one of the oldest at 17. Um, there was definitely older 17 year olds, but I was part of the oldest group. There right. was an 18 year old for a few weeks who aged to 18 and then left. Did, did they put did they put the 12 year olds in with the 17 and 18 or 16 year olds? They were all no, separated. We had, yeah, we had yeah. age groups. So 16 to 18 was one age group. Right. And then anything younger than 16 was the next age group. And we had yeah. different hallways we'd be in. Um, so we didn't really interact with the other families as much because we had separate, like, everything pretty much. Right. That makes sense. Which that I think sense. was helpful, especially because a lot of the time the classroom next to ours, which was the one they were in, would just be so loud. And everyone in our classroom would just be trying to work and be like, oh, thank God we're older. Do you remember what... Uh... Uh, learning program you were in was it ACE was it uh, a uh, state sponsored education or? Uh, I think I think it was private um, all I know is we had seven classes I believe and we just completed those in a week and if we did that every week we'd stay on track right. to graduate 
Okay. Pam yeah. well, with like little booklets that you had to fill out and all that stuff. Okay. Yes and no. They just throw the textbook at you, say, take notes for this chapter, then take a test. And that was it. <laughs> and I'd be like I'd be like, I don't know any of this. <laughs> like, this was not taught to me. I think yeah, I don't think they ever did proper teaching from like, you know, whiteboard to teaching you. You just had to do it yourself. Yeah. Um Yeah, it was uh it was very difficult for some students. I did okay. Like I managed to scrape by with like an 80 to 90% tops. Like in art you got 100, but in art you just drew for a little while and were like, "Look at my art." Like, look, mommy, I did a stick figure today. That's all you had to do. Now, uh, being that you're out of out of there, um, are you going to college or you just go out and do the workforce? Um, I'm in college right now. I'm a okay. full time student. Um, I'm not allowed to work yet until I get another visa for a special, you know, blah blah blah. Right. Able to work. Um, so right now I'm just on the student visa. I was actually debating not coming back to America. The last time I visited Austria, I don't blame uh, you. I was like, I was like, maybe I stay, maybe I leave. Uh, I'm studying art, um, art studio, in order to move that into becoming an art teacher. I hope. Well, if if uh, Diamond Ranch decides to call you for a job, don't don't accept it. <laughs> um, I actually got <laughs> contacted after the HIPAA everything all of that happened and was like they were like oh we'd love to have you do a talk here and i was like ah, what? Yeah, no okay. like that evil laugh of just like mm, right. ah, no no apparently yeah. they asked a few people okay um being that you are in college um when you enrolled in college did those credits from that diamond ranch were they were accredited? They were you able to get into college with that, or did you have to take a GED? Or yes, um, really. So after after boarding school, I went to OPI, which is called Optimum Performance Institute, which is for adults. So I was given all of my freedoms. It's a lovely place. Like I loved living there. I loved being there. And through there, I finished my high school education and okay. graduated at um, eighteen round time. I actually finished my classes a bit earlier than like scheduled like at the beginning of the year because i did an advanced track i did like double the amount of lessons a week and through them i managed to get all of my other credits that they did not properly give me done and so i'm i'm in uh california i'm in a cal state school so okay. it, i it managed to go through okay because there's a lot of places um that i've People that I've talked to have gone to other places. Their education is not accredited, so they can't get into college. They have to take the GED, or they even trying to get into the military. They can't get into the military because these things are not accredited. It's complete garbage. So, well, that's good. That's good that you were able to to get into college. That's good. I yeah, guess one not- of my friends had that happen where none of her credits at boarding school counted for anything and she had to take the GED because if she wanted to redo all of the high school classes she'd be in high school for two more years you know yeah. with double track even because she they like took away all of her credits and were like nope I mean they have a they have a program called the ACE I was talking about before a credit uh, accelerated Christian education which is Mormon so it doesn't count but it doesn't. It just. It's not accredited, so you might as well just wipe your ass with it. Uh, basically, I guess that is what they used. Really? It like it seemed like just regular. What what I would think is high school. I never did high school. I was oh. in England before then. Um, yeah. Hmm. But I thought it was just regular, um, you know, bog standard high school. Well, most of the ACE programs are for the Baptists and the. Uh... Evangelical, so you talk, you talk a lot about Jesus, and I know the Mormons are. Um, no, it was like really regular classes, like okay. just regular English history. So probably just regular um, history. Um, the only time, like, there's been a few times where they've had issues being credited their things, and it's because some places don't actually see uh, Diamond Ranch as a school. 
and they're not licensed to homeschool. Um, right. So it's just they just don't see it as a school. And it's like, uh, well, that's unfortunate for you. Yeah, sucks for them. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna hold. On. I'm trying to. I'm trying to shed a tear. It's not. Nothing's coming. <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> the itty bitty violin. <laughs> I'm trying. It's not working. So, no. but uh, you know they do. They are a healing families. One. <laughs> Youth One youth at a time. <laughs> <laughs> such an awesome, they must be such nice people wow. to work with youth like that, you know. Right. Oh, so kind. I wonder. I wonder if there's been any lawsuits in that place. Um, there was one that I definitely know of for sexual assaults from a therapist against a girl there. Um, I know of the girl. I'm not sure if I ever met her because they kind of did, didn't did do names, did do names. It was strange. But um, when I talked to Bill, the cool lawyer guy, he essentially said, while yes, what the therapist was doing was really inappropriate, they couldn't prove it was like of a sexual nature. But the therapist got fired, I believe, which is, you know, ho hoorah. But it was like, oh, God. Yeah. Well, you can but break. You sign away everything. You can break therapist into two words, you know, the rapist. That's a wordle <laughs> game right there. Right. That's you're you're I'm sorry, you're playing chess. I'm only on checkers right now. Hey, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's accurate. <laughs> so tell me how life is doing now for you. Um, really well, actually. I I have my own place. Oh, I'm so happy that I'm happy, if that makes any sense. Um, fun fact, yesterday I celebrated my one year clean of self-harm, which is, I think, a pretty big deal for me, because before then it was like a few months at most, and I was like, party! Um, I'm able to do pretty much anything under the law. I'm not like, you know, breaking the law, but I'm allowed to right. do things I wasn't allowed to do before, like video games have a laptop have a phone go to class have my own private space where i can just be like mm, you're not coming in today right basically freedom to do what you want yes yeah i'm i'm a young adult and i'm living like a young adult you know i get some financial freedom to like be like oh i like that dress like wear you know i'm wearing a tank top right now i can wear tank tops there you go see? i can Oh, and I can be gay, which is there you go. Beautiful time of the year. I've got a pride flag, and um, that was not allowed in boarding school. And I was like, mm. <laughs> "Yeah, well, you know, this is the thing about America. You have the right to, you have the freedom to do that, even to be gay. You know." Oh, but my favorite. Because my favorite thing I've ever done in boarding school was to mess with the system a little bit. Because legally speaking, you are protected under the Freedom of Speech Act. If you say, in my opinion, in front of anything. Mm -hmm. So I got staff in trouble by saying, in my opinion, Jesus sucks. And they gave me detention and I went, it's protected! It's protected! And they'd get in trouble because it, you know, it was protected. But you know, sure. there's only so far it can go. I was just like pushing the boundaries, were you? Pushing those he, boundaries. You know, I'm such a. I was such a good kid. I'd never push the boundaries. I was always <laughs> happy and peppy and never depressed. Bullshit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> right, right. And like I said, with the, with these organizations, it's it. You know, they always say they they go by what whatever their book is. I know it's the Book of Mormon for them, um, but they interpret it how they want to interpret it. You know what I mean? If they yeah. if they can interpret it to suit their narrative, they're going to do it. You know, take it out of context, however they want, they're going to do it. You know, that's that's how it is with these re religious organizations, and not just the Mormons. It's the Baptists and the Evangelicals as well. You know, 
like you said you uh, yeah. before you you know you, you were quoting bible verses and like, oh no you, you know that's, that's not what it means it's not what it means and you're taking it out of context <laughs> that's that's how yeah. they do it this is what it really means and they'll tell you what they think it means so <laughs> but that's that's religion you, you take it or leave it some people like it some people don't i i choose to not like yeah. it so oh all right that's completely understandable I know that if I believed in heaven, I'd have a lot less anxiety about just knocking dead at any moment. So, I mean, you know, it might pay off. Um, I don't practice Judaism very much. Um, I do do Hanukkah. I do, you know, Jewish New Year because it is a way that I honor my ancestors. Um, sure. But not because I believe in any god. But also... Jews are also like, yes, no, maybe there might be a God, there might not be a God. It's it's very fun, I think. Well, from what I've heard, the Jews, they, they're they still looking for the Messiah, waiting for the Messiah. Oh, Jesus yeah. was basically, he was no good. He was not he, he was Messiah nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, he, he, he made Christian? <laughs> <laughs> Opposing religions. Yeah, the only reason why Christian religion was because of the Roman Empire. That's why, because it was a religion of them. That's the only reason why. And they popular. were pillagers. Oh yeah, to say the least. Oh yeah. They pulled a Genghis Khan. Yeah. So. I mean, isn't like most of the world related to Genghis Khan in some sort of a way, though? I'm not sure. Maybe they are. I don't know. But I, I've I've seen enough in religion because I I went to a religious school when I was a kid as well. Um, that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast. And uh, seeing what what was being done, especially to the girls, whether physical, mental, it was a travesty. It was something that should not have been done, especially somebody who calls himself a, a Christian or Bible believer or whatever they call themselves. You know, a whole bunch of... Uh, um, I don't want to make it sound bad, but a lot of gay sex. for, for A people, lot of gay sex in a place that molest, doesn't like the gays. Well, not that. It's It was the teachers molesting the boys. You know what I mean? The boys weren't gay, but the teachers were. You know what I mean? Forcing them against their will, basically. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff was happening. Girls were getting uh, molested, you know, and, and it was swept under the rug. And, of course, if you try to tell any of the congregation... They won't believe they're not a real Christian, you know, because well, they, they don't stand for us. According to them, the man that they're listening to, the preacher, is a man of God. How could he possibly do something like that? You know what I mean? So they, they got the blinders on. They so, just only see what they want to see. Exactly. And frankly, what they want to see isn't that's good. why it's that's why it's so hard to prosecute or to oh, get completely. people to believe. Uh, these people, when it comes to you know the pastor molested me or this teacher or this staff member, it's hard to believe because people don't want to believe it. But there have been breakthroughs. I've seen stuff on you know the internet where pastors. Boy Scouts too. Yeah. Well, um, as far as religion is concerned. Oh yeah, um, sorry. It's all right. Uh, pastors, uh, youth pastors, staff members at Christian schools being. You know, caught with child porn and all this other stuff. It's like it's coming out finally. You know what I mean? People are starting to see, which is nice. And the Boy Scouts it too. Is. The Boy Scouts as yeah. well. So uh, a lot of times they can't really prosecute many things, which is very difficult because yeah. um, there's like insufficient proof. Oh, this guy's too good of a gu like person. Oh, you'll ruin his reputation. Uh, the reason I was sent to boarding school is because I was molested at fourteen. Uh, Pretty much 12, nearly 13, to nearly 15. Um, and going to a place where it was still, like, actively happening was like, oh, God. Yeah. From the frying pan right into the fire. Yeah. Oh, in incredibly bad. Um, uh, and and then a lot of the time... Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, a lot of the time they'd be like, oh... Like, this is something they tell a lot of survivors. Oh, you're going to ruin their reputation. Well, I say... You're just making your their reputation accurate. You're not yeah. ruining their reputation. They're ruining their reputation. And that's all you've got to, like, 
know when you push forward with those sorts of things that they're ruining their own reputation as well as that the police just fail a lot of survivors of all of those sorts of things yes. they, they they failed me when i was younger even though there was a lot of proof um and it was just it's just difficult because oh you know they could be a good person you don't want to ruin everything for them and that's what like people were telling me like half of the people were telling me yeah he's horrible and a another set of people were telling me oh you know he's just you know he's just mentally ill you know blah, 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 blah. and i'd just be like oh, yeah God. but what side of that argument has the money and the influence exactly. and the push you know what i mean to, to... And it's the side that says be nice exactly be nice. i also yep. don't like all of the laws that are happening with like uh to do with abortion because there's supposed to be separation from religion and state but right now that's not really happening as much as it should right right and that inf and that influences the boarding schools immensely because now the boarding schools are getting the support of the state although the new thing the new laws that have been pushed through are definitely a start like uh, you have to respect a participant's pronouns you're not allowed to misgender them you you've gotta actually and they're helping to advocate for queer um or lgbt plus people in these settings but also at the same time when i told people what was happening to me they said i was lying that i was just trying to get out of there and that's what they're brainwashing the parents to think um i told my mom oh yeah this is what they said to me and she was like you're making that up for attention like you just want to get out of there you're making it up and i was like please believe me yeah sometimes it's it's just tough for a for a teenager it really is yeah. especially in these times i mean i grew up in the in the 80s and 70s and 80s so it wasn't that bad but now yeah it's gotten a lot worse and a lot of people send their kids away and they think it's gonna help their kids and frankly i have never forgiven my parents for sending me away which sounds like a kind of mean thing but how can i forgive somebody who sent me to be abused essentially who didn't do enough research into the places they were sending me to see that oh shit, maybe don't go there um including the facebook page i i mentioned um to you uh we just got right. uh, we survived diamond ranch there are legitimate parents on there being like oh my kids here blah 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 and all of us are just like get yeah. off this page like this is this is not your space this is for the survivors you get off you continue like you can boast about abusing your child somewhere else and yeah. like whenever those posts come up on the facebook everyone um roasts them frankly like like oh you're you're like on a group about survivors and you think it's a good idea to post them like <laughs> yeah it's, that's it's a bit of a roast that's a bit too it's a lot of fun too oh yeah it's very therapeutic to roast the parents <laughs> it's like it's like oh you look like you'd send your kid away shit See, like a, that a lot a lot of these places well, their websites, you know, they're going to show all the happy, all the people with smiles on their face, petting the animals, you know, yeah. stuff like that, sitting down um, at dinner with a big smile on their face. They're not going to show you the dark side of it. Oh, not at all. Um, I think one of the testimonials, uh, sorry, one second, I cannot multitask. One of the testimonials is from, well, a few of them are from people I know. Um, and when I look at them, I'm like, what did they bribe you with? Because I would like, I would have liked some of that. <laughs> uh, some of the like, I don't know, hot chocolate or something like that. Um, but the testimonials are just like, um, okay. Um, do you know who Alex Boye is? No. Um, he's like this famous musician who came to our school to help promote it. And it's like, oh no. Oh, and also my favorite thing about the testimonials is one of the testimonials is from a guy who 
still sends me weird DMs on on Instagram, like, because I recently, uh, I've been getting into tattoos, and he was like, oh, you look blah, 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 you look blah, 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 like, I, I got this, the, uh, the one up here, mm-hmm. um, he was like, ooh, like, you've got armpit hair right now, and I was like, and he, like, always sends me, like, this verbal abuse, and I'm like, bro, you did not improve, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> um, there's testimonials from staff, parents, um, from kids, and it's just like, oh, okay. There's also pictures on their website of the kids, and chances are they were not all consensually put there, and I've asked them to take pictures of me down before, and they did not respond at all. I was like, I don't want to be there. And, um, some, and sometimes they'll have decoys. They'll have kids that don't go to that school, and they'll take pictures of them outside somewhere and, and yeah yeah it's exactly. all deception it's all deception oh yeah so for instance i'm looking at the testimonials right now and i recognize one person who's doing very badly right now another person is doing very badly the guy who sent me verbal abuse another person who's not doing great um another person who's not doing great um a group of people who aren't doing great like a lot of these people oh and my favorite, my favorite testimonial is the girl who bullied everyone. <laughs> it's like these test, like as a student looking through the testimonials, I'm like, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> maybe fat, like, maybe she like, mm, you know, bullshit, bullshit. Right. Especially the one that like bullied all the girls. She just lied um, all the time about her entire experience. Um, maybe, so it was like, maybe they yeah, paid her. Okay. Maybe, they pay, maybe they paid her for maybe. her testimony. So yeah, uh, my favorite of them all is actually it's a group of people who I definitely know. One of them got pulled from the program for family reasons. One of them is twelve, and the other two hate the program. Like these aren't. The, like some the video of them isn't a testimonial it's just a bunch of scrap together footage that they had of us laying around and was like testimonial look at how happy they are yeah and like behind the camera they've got the gun they're like smile smile <laughs> the gun <laughs> the the uh, the metaphorical gun yes yes if you don't smile we're going to we're going to discipline you get you in trouble yes oh very much yes like look happy (laughs) smile for the camera Mm. well anna it's been a great time thank you it has been very much coming on if there's anybody you're welcome and to the people out there that are watching if you went to diamond ranch academy please uh contact me it's all on the bottom of the uh, uh, video here. Um, there's a link on the top of the channel page as well. You can click on that, and you can get a hold of me that way, or my email, the Hammer Podcast 2020 at Gmail. So there's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. We'll set up a time. Okay, Anna, thanks for for uh, being here. Um, stay on the line. I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Okay. All right. So uh, for the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. You take care of yourself. You take care of each other. And we'll see you in the next podcast.